Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to make a non-technical video. It's been a while since I've made a video. I think it looks like it's been about four months. I do have a bunch of new stuff coming this year. I just wanted to kind of get back into the new year with a non-technical thing and kind of address a lot of questions and comments and things that I receive through YouTube, my blog, on Reddit, on some of my study groups. And I was thinking about doing this maybe like once a quarter or maybe just twice a year. I don't know. But it's basically just career and certification advice. I threw life advice on here just kind of tongue-in-cheek. Hey, if you want life advice, you know, send me a message. Uh, <laughs> but I did want to say that a lot of the messages that I get, if you don't know, if you go to the journey to the CCIE.wordpress.com, over here there's a contact button, and if you fill this out, send me a question, comment, whatever, I will receive it in my inbox, and I am very good at responding. Pretty sure I respond to almost everyone. The people I don't respond to are probably people who are asking me to give them free things. And sorry, I don't give free things. Also, if you're going to ask me a question about a specific problem you are having, please give me details. You just say, hey, how come BGP is not working? And then don't give me any information. I'm just not going to respond because I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. So... Through a lot of these, I just want to go through maybe five or so questions or comments that I've gotten. And I just want to go over, and I think it'll be useful because these are questions that I get repeatedly. These aren't just this one person said one thing and I think it's a good one. I just want to share some things that I'm constantly answering because I think that it would help the community as a whole and maybe help you out to hear some of the answers. So, the first one. This is actually a comment on my how to study for SD access without breaking the bank video. In that video, I say that there's a K-bit subscription for $100 per year, and that's not true anymore. I think it's $500, but the point still stands that kbits.com is a good resource for SD access, and it's way cheaper than buying equipment, you know? 10 grand versus 500 bucks. Maybe you get your boss to give you 500 bucks. So I just wanted to put this out there because I get this comment so much. I mean, so much. And I, I think I, I put something under the video as well, but no one reads those. And I'm not going to change the video. It's, it's, it's there. So just wanted to address that. The next one. This was one I received in my mailbox and I get this type of question all the time, just worded differently. So the, the basic, what it comes down to is that this person is in college doing a computer science degree and looking to get their first job in networking. The, the first question is, do you think a CCNA is good enough before I graduate or should I go ahead and take the CCMP or even CCIE? My response, Yes, the CCNA is good enough before you graduate, and I think you can get it before you graduate. That blueprint really is not that crazy where you need years and years of experience. I got my CCNA when I was in college. Go for it. I think it's really good, and it shows you know, potential employers' motivation that you have. As far as the CCNP or CCIE goes... Don't take this while in college, unless you are a rare case. And I know there's a few people out there who I've seen who are just brilliant people who, who you know, take them. There's one particular guy in, in, that I'm thinking of who, who, you know, I think he's trying to take the CCIE and he's not even 20 years old yet. He's an exception to the rule. For most people, don't take the CCMP or CCIE before you graduate college. My recommendation is take the CCNA. Get a couple years experience, networking experience. Help desk is not the same. Get at least a year of networking experience, then go for the CCMP. And the CCIE really should be something that you have years and years of networking experience before you tackle the CCIE. If you get these things and you have no experience, the, the people who are looking at your resume are just going to assume that you dumped it. You know, that's just the way of the world. The rest of his questions kind of have to do with how many hours and and what kind of equipment do you need. Those things are going to vary by person. When people ask me what I did for my CCNA, I took the CCNA in a month. I was still in college, and I was kind of doing the study thing on my own anyway. So I, I did a month and took the CCNA. The CCMP took me, I don't know, seven to nine months, somewhere in there. And the CCIE, I've started and stopped a million times due to 
the COVID situation and et cetera, et cetera. So the CCIE, everyone says it's about, you know, 1,500 or 1,000, 1,500 hours of labbing. So seems fair. Let's go to the next one. This one I got on Reddit. Um, I'm not going to share with you my Reddit name, but uh, whatever. People reach out to me on Reddit somehow. Um, they don't actually know who I am, but that's fine. They don't need to. I'm not famous or anything. But this person is asking me, you know, they are a new IT person. Um, let's see. I transitioned to networking from another line of work a few years ago. I'm currently working for an ISP, studying for CCMP, working on Encore right now. So it hasn't passed Encore yet but not sure what to do after that. My head says a Narsi, as all net engineering folks need route switch skills, but I'm also thinking of doing the DevNet Associate and then the Enterprise Auto to get the MP. There's nothing stopping me from doing both, but I'm torn on what to do. So I responded to this person saying that you should do the Narsi. And I think for most people who are getting their first CCMP, go the traditional route. Get your route switch skills in place. Your route switch skills will trans translate to, you know, network engineering, um, route switch, enterprise, service provider, even collaboration, wireless, you name it. Oh, data center, of course. You know, I think you need route switch skills. As far as the DevNet associate goes, I don't believe that any network engineer should get that until they are fundamentally sound with their networking skills. How are you going to automate it if you don't understand it? Sure, you might be able to push some stuff out to multiple devices, and that's great, but if you don't really understand BGP, uh, what's the point in automating it? The other thing is, even though the DevNet is an associate-level exam, if you look at the blueprint, it's really not. I mean, it's. I think it's it's a little bit more advanced, and I think you definitely need some years of experience you know, doing software development and doing Cisco networking before attempting that exam. So for all the people who ask me the very similar version of this question, my answer is always going to be take the CCMP and the traditional route and become strong in networking, then take a look at the DevNet stuff. And even then, I'm going to say this, I know the DevNet is really popular with you know, networking influencers and, and people trying to sell their, um, you know, their courses on various video websites and whatever. But for most network engineers, I don't think the DevNet is actually needed. I think if you have a GitHub and you have automation projects in your GitHub, that will go further with a potential employer than saying you passed some exam. You know, I, just just my my opinion. Next question. They want to know how my lab studies are going. But more, the reason why I put this on here is because I get a very similar question. Do you use a server or practice using Azure Cloud? I would be grateful if you could provide me with some details like system requirements, etc. So, me personally, I have an old server from one of my employers, and I would recommend anyone do this. The next time your company is decommissioning a server, just ask them if you could take it home. You know, obviously, you know, after hard drives are scrubbed and all that stuff, but I bet your employer is willing to give you an old server that they're no, no longer using. I have an HP ProLiant. Oh, God. I don't know how old it is. It, it's probably 20, from like 2016 or something like that. But it's got 48 gigs of RAM. I have EVNG on there. You could throw CML. You could just throw CSR VMs, whatever you want. I love it. And it, it the hardware was free to me. Just getting the, the licenses for the images, you know, you can get them through CML. I just use a server and I throw a simulator on there. I think it's the easiest way to go, especially for CCMP or CCIE stuff where you, you know, you need 20 routers and I, I'm just not going to pay for 20 routers. It's just cheaper. I don't have any system requirements. What I will say is that Whichever track you're going on, let's say it's the enterprise or service provider, Cisco has done some webinars with system requirements, and you can find them directly on Cisco.com under the certification, you know, under Cisco Learning. You'll find some good stuff for system requirements for the IE. For the CCMP, you don't really need any system requirements. Just, you know, get some IOSV or get some, you know, whatever images you need, and you'll figure it out pretty quickly. The last question yeah, so this is going to wrap up the video. Um, I didn't want to go too long, but 
this person was asking if I had a Discord or anything. I'd love to have someone to talk about CCIE. I personally do not have a Discord. However, I use Router Gods, which I believe is the best networking study group that's out there. You go to meetup.com slash router gods. You'll see this here and you can request to join and you'll get access to the Discord. This is the best networking study group out there, period. You will find people who wrote Cisco press books, who are, you know, people who work for Pluralsight and an INE, and you also find plenty of people who work for various vendors, who work for Cisco, who work for Juniper, who, who can really help you out. My recommendation, go to Router Gods. I'm on there. I'm pretty active. You'll find me on there. You'll find plenty of people who know way more than me about networking on there and people who are well, way more connected. So that's it. Again, this video was just kind of something I wanted to put out there. The video, the channel is still active and I will be doing technical videos very shortly. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.